Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 273. Fire. 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 Today's most inspiring entrepreneurs delivered straight to you seven days a week. This is Entrepreneur on Fire. Here is your host who is always prepared to ignite, John Lee Dumas. Entrepreneur on on fire. 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 All in one. We've heard it many times, Fire Nation, but this time it's true. Squarespace offers an all-in-one platform so you can create a beautiful website just like that. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code IDEA. Are you looking for a graphic designer? How about 210,000 of them? 99designs is waiting to connect you to more than 200,000 graphic designers worldwide. Visit 99designs.com slash fire to find out how they can help you with your next logo, web, or apparel design. That's 99designs.com slash fire. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Dan Ayuto. Dan, are you prepared to ignite? Totally light this audience up. Let's go, John. (laughs) All right, Dan. Dan is an author of business and real estate books. He is a connector of experts and a joint venture artist who seeks to help everyone who needs that special something or someone at just the right time. I've given Fire Nation just a little overview, Dan, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you and then give us an overview of your business. You got it, John. Um, Well, like you said, a writer of books, been doing that for 10 years, probably have four or five of them, Uh, connector, Uh, sitting here looking at one right now, it was the uh, be a real estate heavyweight back in the day when real estate was all that and the bag of nuts, it's back on its way up, but uh, this piece here was a CD, 92 experts on there, I got them all to deliver their brand of wisdom, so I said, give me 10 to 30 pages of what you know. Uh, and specifically, specifically on what you do so that we can create sort of the encyclopedia of real estate. When anyone had a question, it ended up being, I think, 1,262 pages. Wow. Uh, yeah, so, you, you know, it's a collector of experts, people who are trusted, people you know that can help other people. So that's what I like to do is I like to, to find the people, vet them, get to know them, find out what they do, and have them give that back so that we can help, you know, people who need that advice and don't have to learn the hard way. So that's one example, John. That's one example. Well, Dan, I'm sure you have plenty more. We're going to delve into all of them later on in the interview. But before we do, we start Entrepreneur on Fire off with a success quote to get that motivational ball rolling. So take it away. Purpose, passion, and desire are the fuels that will feed your fire. I want you to remember that. Purpose, passion, and desire are the fuels that absolutely will feed your fire. They'll keep you going through the down times. If you follow your passion and you are really passionate about what you're out to do, nothing can stop you. There's no end to where you can take it. So that's what I, I always say. Purpose, passion, desire are the fuels that will feed your fire. You stay focused on what you're good at, what you love to do, and don't quit because there is no such thing as failure. It's finding out what doesn't work along the road to that which will. So that's kind of my, my uh, mantra. Uh, also, you know, if you, if you, I've, I've written some stuff on positive attitudes. Positive attitude, you know, it's, some people look at that and say, hey, it's a little wishy-washy. But really, if you just default to a positive solution-based attitude on everything you do and don't dwell on that negative, then you're always looking for a solution, getting closer to an answer, and taking action towards success as opposed to dwelling in this negative, poor, pitiful, you know, the fur line pity pot, here's my party, poor, poor me, get out of there. You don't have time for that. You only live once. <laughs> it's so true, Dan. Purpose, passion, desire are the fuels that will feed your fire. And that is so fitting for Entrepreneur on Fire. You've ignited the audience, Dan, but let's take a step back now because you are our spotlighted guest today. And Entrepreneur on Fire is all about the journey of our spotlighted guest. So, 
Take us back to a time maybe when you weren't on fire because as entrepreneurs, we fail so many times throughout our journey and we can learn from these failures and I want Fire Nation to learn from one of your failures, Dan. So take us down to the ground level. Tell us a story about a time when you failed and how you overcame that. Ooh, that's a tough one, John, because based on my mindset, you can't fail unless you quit. So really... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to figure out what would I consider a failure. Well, I can help you out with that, Dan, because failure is, is a word that we use, but it can also be translated into a challenge or an obstacle that you face. Now we're talking challenge. Thanks for bringing it to that, that type of a, a perspective. That's what I do as a host, Dan. Yeah. That, well, hey, you're good at what you do. <laughs> you love what you do. You keep this audience yeah. fired up. So challenges now, there's plenty of those. You reach them every day. And uh, some of the bigger ones, um, you know, I've, let's let's step back a second here. Yeah, uh, we want to hear a story. We want to be yeah, there yeah, with yeah. you in that moment, Dan. Right. Well, you got to kind of go back a little bit because I did 20 years in the Coast Guard flying around on C-130s and, um, you know, saving lives. I was a real estate agent, an appraiser. I had 20 properties. I was writing books. So all this stuff goes on, and, and, and it all takes you into different realms. But one thing, a challenge that always got to me was finding people that actually did what they say they were going to do. And often and many times, they couldn't follow through, and it left me kind of wondering why they couldn't get it done. Let's hear so, the best example of that. Geez, there's thousands of them. I it's just seen, want the best one, though. Ah, geez. Um, oh, well, say someone wants, they say they can um, do a certain action. There's so many of these different examples. It's hard to pick one, but it's like they just couldn't follow through. And what I really want to get the point across here is don't ask people that can't do certain things to do the things you want them to do. So only ask the people that are good at what they do to do only that and you won't be disappointed. So that's all I'm trying to say. Well, that's a great point, Dan. That's a great point. But how have you actually faced that in your life? Like with a real estate transaction or when you were flying a C-130, when did somebody say they were going to do something and they didn't do it in a real life scenario? Well, when you're in a plane, there is no, that didn't get done right. (laughs) That gets done right because- as they say, aviation, it has no mercy. You know, if you make a mistake, you'll die. You could die. So in aviation, you really didn't find that to be the case too often. Oh, let's, let's take it for contractors. You know, the contractor didn't show up, didn't do the job correctly. Uh, just most of the time didn't show up, you know, so it would be me doing that in my spare time. Uh, it's this is such a tough question for me because I don't ask easy questions, Dan. I just want you to take us back to a time when you were younger and a contractor didn't show up. So you picked up a hammer. You started knocking in nails. Tell us a story like that when something really bad happened and how you overcame that. Well, that that would be um, that'd be a routine routine. in, in when you're looking at real estate like that it's always the case and before okay so that's not a specific story then so specific story i I don't have something that stands out because it always seems that i always just looked at as an opportunity and a challenge and overcame it so nothing ever held me back let's put it that way i never let anything hold me back there's challenges but they weren't insurmountable so I, i think one other thing was a transition from 20 years in the military to real world life and you know all right dan so let's talk about that you get out of the military take us to that moment in time what are the challenges that you're facing as dan okay um well of course once the structure is gone uh you're looking at now where do i go what do i do i've got my real estate but this is in 2005 i retired 2006 the bottom drops out of real estate well then you collect 92 experts to find the answers so that was, you know, done. But you're still looking at, okay, well, the real estate market is now bottomed out. I don't want to be an agent. I really, you know, I was a landlord for many years. And now where do I go from here? Well, back to where I wanted to always be was online, connecting with people and helping people in any which way, shape or form that I could. So building websites back to that. And then you're, you're running into 
Uh, you know, I'm a right brain guy. I'm a designer. I can put the flow down and create the, you know, the vision for the sites and do the sites. But really code, that's a left brain activity. You got coders and they are their own brand and you have to understand them. So that was a challenge dealing with those types of individuals. And that can be a serious frustration for a right brained uh, design type uh, entrepreneurial thinker. So left brain dealing with the left brain analytical code types and their brand of wisdom and what they do, definite challenge. <laughs> so I've, I've learned, you know, disk profiling and what have you to be able to, um, you know, take it as it comes and know who you're dealing with and how they operate. So, so Dan, in one sentence, in just one sentence, what's a clear lesson you learned from these failures and challenges that you've chatted about? I'd say understanding where you're at, nothing's perfect, and you need to keep going towards the solution and not making the same mistake twice. Love that. And we're going to move forward, Dan, to the aha moment. And now you know me as a host. You know I'm not going to let you get away with abstract theories. You know I'm going to ask for a story. I want to hear a time when you had an aha moment, a lightning bolt just struck you, the clouds part of the sun was shining through and you said, wow, this resonates with my authentic self. This is me. This is something I want to do. Share with us that moment, that story when that happened and then tell us the steps that you took to make that a success. Well, I've been doing it ever since I can remember and one thing that uh, really cemented what I'd always been doing, but it brought it to the forefront and really made it evident was sitting down watching, uh, I think it was 60 minutes or 20, 20 with the wife one day. Great. And we're watching this mafioso guy in the uh, Italian Alps kick out his girlfriend out of a limo in the middle of the Alps. <laughs> and as she's, she's she's yelling in the middle of the road, Ayuto, Ayuto. And, and I was, do you hear that? And I'm like, yeah, I think, didn't she say my name? She says, yeah, she's, she's screaming for help. She's yelling for help. I'm like, oh, wow, that is very cool. That's what, you know, that's what I do. I wish I was there to, you know, give her a lift. But anyway, that really cemented in my mind why I've been doing this for so long. And this is pretty much what I do is just I'm always there trying to help the next person to learn from the past mistakes or the wisdom of somebody who's already been there and done that that can help them not make those mistakes and leverage that so that they can be a lot further, a lot faster with a lot less effort and a team behind them. So that was, you know, that's kind of the aha moment for me. It really cemented why I'm here, what I was born to do, why I was put here. And and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so Dan, you told us that story of you're sitting in the room with your wife watching 60 Minutes. You see the woman get kicked out of the limo and she's screaming, I you too, I you too. Now that is going to be what people take away from this interview because you're telling a story right now. So keep us there right now. What are some specific steps that you took after that moment, after you had that aha moment that really turned what you wanted to do and what you saw there into success? it just reinforced what I was already doing, but it put me on a, a bigger, faster, harder, longer, stronger track that just cemented that thought. So it built in some, some, something that says, this is why you're here. It was the kind of that moment, like you're, you're drawing out here is that moment that said, this is your purpose. And so what was a specific action you took to go faster, bigger, larger? What did you do? Well, of course, looking for for situations, throwing myself out there, being able to say, hey, if this is a problem for you, this is where I'm most effective. So I was able to really jump into the real estate at that point because I could say, man, I know this like the back of my hand. I've written books that have been on the shelves of Barnes and Noble and all that. And then I've created two or three digital products and, you know, assembled hundreds of experts in the field. And I've done 20 multi properties and, you know, millions of dollars of that crap. So I knew I can help people with that and absolutely dial them in, get them on the right track. And so that's why I, I took off with that and did it. 
And what was the biggest risk that you took during that time? Because like you said, when you decide to go bigger, larger, faster, you have to take a risk of some sort. Absolutely. 60 grand. You know, that's what it took to produce the best book I could, the best website I could, um, the the promotion, everything behind it. You know, you put your money where your mouth is and, you know, it's 60 grand. Boom. So it was that was the risk. But it's been paid back tenfold. I mean, really, uh, it was all profit from the real estate anyway. So I'm, I was using the money from what I did to tell people on how to do it. Which You're is using the, house money in a way. But yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's using the money that you actually earn yeah. from doing what you're trying to show other people to do, not just trying to sell them something to make money and never doing it. That's a lot of that out there. And that's that's ugh, total bunk. That's what I'm against. So um, I, I guess the risk was, you know, put your money where your mouth is, go all in and, you know, be confident in what you're doing, because that's what you're born to do. And there is no lose here. You can't lose your you're totally doing what you're supposed to be doing. So it like there again, you never fail. You learn what doesn't work along the way. And that's successfully figuring out what doesn't work along the road to that which does. And you're pivoting all the while. So let's boil this down one more time. What's one clear lesson you learned from this aha moment that you had, this putting it all on the line, this putting your money where your mouth is? What's that one clear lesson in just one sentence? Do what you're born to do. Find that out and don't quit on yourself or the people around you. I love that. Put those blinders on sometimes because when I started Entrepreneur on Fire, people said, John, you're crazy. Seven days a week, a podcast, nobody's going to listen to you. You can't produce that. You're going to burn out. But you know what? I knew I was meant to produce a daily podcast. I wasn't willing to be that person that's just producing another weekly podcast. I wanted to be different and lo and behold, it's worked out. So I love that advice. And Dan, have you had an I've made it moment? Never, because then you quit. You you just can't go there. You I kick mean, those feet up, light that cigar, and you go, I've made it, it, and it's over. Forget <laughs> it, forget it. Because look, once you've made it, you're not helping anybody because you think you made it. And then what? Then you've lost your passion. So if you if you take that I've made it attitude, you just unmade it. You just lost. Wow. You can never totally make it. I mean, yeah, you know, down here in Florida, 50 miles away, this lady, made, you know, she she hit the Powerball or whatever, $300 million after taxes. I guess you could say she made it if you want to just – it count your blessings in dollars, but really once you have enough money to support your lifestyle, money becomes secondary and you're back to why you've been put here. So really it's, it's really living every day for why and what you're here to do and what you were given to do that with. So it's actually living out what you were put here to do. That's, that's more about making it. So you're making it every day. Every day is a success by helping other people become successes. So that's a, a never-ending success, so to speak. Um, so you never, oh, I made it, now what? No, every day is a new, I made it. You know, So every day is a gift, so to speak. What a really cool introspective on that. I love asking that question, Dan, because every guest answers it differently. I love how you brought up Powerball, because for me, a lot of times that's more of a curse than it is a blessing, because you have this massive windfall that you didn't quote unquote really earn. And to me, success and happiness is the gradual realization of a worthy ideal. Let me restate that. Success and happiness is the gradual realization of a worthy ideal. And now what exactly is a worthy ideal? Well, to all of us, that worthy ideal is going to be different. But if we can find out what that worthy ideal is, and we can work towards it on a daily basis, that gradual realization of it, that's where success can come and that's where happiness can come. And that's in my mind and that's what I'm working towards in Entrepreneur on Fire. And I think that that's something that a lot of listeners need to think about is that, you know, the actual ending point is not really the goal. It's that gradual realization. So just figure out what you want to realize and then start working towards that on a daily basis. And you're already successful and you could already be made happy by that. So Dan, let's talk about the journey. What is your philosophy on the entrepreneurial journey? 
journey. Ooh, that's a huge question, John, because the journey is a long road. <laughs> it's the longest. It is the long road. But, you know, this is where your journey gets easy by knowing again back to finding your passion, figuring out what you were put here to do. What are you good at? What are your talents? What are your strengths? What do you do naturally? What do people come to you for? What do you want to help people with? What are you driven to do? These are all simple questions, all based on passion. And once you figure that out, you see Tony Robbins act with massive action. Follow your passion. You see it all the time. It's not that difficult. Just know what if there's nothing else, if money wasn't an issue, family, you know, all the bills, travel, obligations, what keeps, what, what do you always go back to that, man, I got to keep doing this. It's like some kind of neurotic thing. Well, that neur- neur- neuroticism is telling you this is what you're born to do because you keep coming back to it. It's what you naturally gravitate to. It's what you love to do. Find a way to make that pay so you su- can sustain yourself. And do more of it. And that's what I like to do. And I, I was lucky enough, you know, with the 20 years of flying with the Coast Guard, you know, you get a pension, had 20 of those properties, sold all, sold those off before the crash. Duh. Duh. I was smart about that. So, you know, no bills. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I don't have to worry about the dollar so I can focus on what I love to do. And what a, what a great life. Very powerful. And you're right, Dan. You do have a lot of exciting things going on right now. You have a great mindset. You're passionate. You want to share that passion. So right now, share with Fire Nation one thing that's really exciting you right now. Right now, we have a team of five behind us. And this is where I get into the next project, the next project. Yeah. This is the next. And this is the long-term project for me now. I'm settled in, been working on this for, geez, since... Since that day and 60 minutes, you were born to help. You know, it it is right now just it's kind of funny. Today we are rolling this out as you speak. I don't know. It's one of those. Um, what do we call that when things just happen? Serendipitous events uh, today. Business Mentors 101.com has just went live. We have <gasps> 13 high level experts. I mean, these people are good at what they do. For instance, our Twitter our Twitter expert has 460,000 followers. Who better to learn from than someone like Elise Quivado? Wow. Right? So, yeah, these are our you know business experts. We've got them all. I don't want to go through the whole list here and, and take up this time. Yeah, we'll be linking it up in the show notes. These are the types of people I've, I know. I, I talk to their friends there at the top of their game, and they're, they, they've got the, the heart to help other people. They are destined to help others. So I attract people that help others. That's what I do. I try to find mentors, get them to give that back. You know, leadingedgebusiness.tv, I created like, I I did like eight interviews just to learn at, you know, created ncs.tv, which is a web TV network, created that just so I could learn that last piece of the internet puzzle. Did some interviews to learn how to do that. But really, my mission is to find all the mentors out there who have the greatest hearts and get them on a platform to be able to give that knowledge back and assist others to to create a robust environment for people to succeed based on the knowledge of people who've already done it. So this is where we're at today. Wow, that is exciting, Dan. And from one interviewer to another, little unsolicited advice tell stories. People resonate with stories. They connect with stories and they learn from stories. That's where the real power is. So thank you so much for sharing that. We're going to link up everything that we've talked about today in the show notes at entrepreneuronfire.com slash Dan Ayuto. And now a quick break for our sponsors. 97, 98, 99, Woo! 99 Designs is packed with over 210,000 graphic designers worldwide who are ready to help you with your next logo, web, apparel, or mobile app design. It's so easy to get started today. Simply visit 99designs.com slash fire, tell them what you're looking for, and dozens of designers will submit quality designs created just for you. Not only does 99designs offer a complimentary design consultation with their San Francisco design team once you sign up, they also offer a continued world-class customer support 24-7 over the phone, via email, and on chat. Don't delay, Fire Nation. 
When you visit 99designs.com slash fire, you'll get a $99 power pack of services for free. That's right, Fire Nation. 99designs is offering you a $99 power pack of services for free. So visit 99designs.com slash fire to start your next design. In Fire Nation, I have an exciting resource to share with you today, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that allows you to easily build your own website just the way you want it. Squarespace has a killer design library, and they are constantly updating their platform, so you have the latest features at your fingertips. Squarespace just recently added an e-commerce to the list, so you can set up shop and start selling your products quickly and easily. They've also added a user-friendly calendar feature so you can share your business schedule right on your website. So whether you have an upcoming speaking event that you want to share with your audience or a new product or service launching soon, Squarespace's events collection calendar feature has you covered. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. And for a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code IDEA. So Dan, we've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning rounds, and this is where I get to provide you with a series of questions, and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Let's roll. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Existing obligations with Uncle Sam. It really slowed me down, but you know what? Saved a lot of lives. It was worth it. It's a sacrifice I made, and it it it, it helps me today. So, uh, existing obligations, the need for security, uh, the things that I did early in life, you know, stick by the bargain. You sign up, you finish it. So, twenty years later, now I'm on my entrepreneurial journey in two thousand five, full force. And at that time, I'm 42, retired, and I can totally pursue my passion. Yeehaw! Wow. So so existing obligations, uh, the need for security, and the commitments that were already in place were kind of, you know, I wouldn't say they were holding me back, but they were kind of postponing my launch to entrepreneurialism full time. Well, I resonate with that, Dan. You're speaking to an eight-year army captain, armor platoon leader over in Iraq. And so I really resonate specifically with what you're saying with the C-130. And I'm thankful for people like yourself because it was a C-130 that took me out of Baghdad back to the States. So for that, I'll always be grateful. It was a very uncomfortable ride, but my favorite plane ride of my life. Oh, man, I got 5,000 hours in that bird. It's a, we call it the bleed air blimp. You know, it's, it's just a rattling, humming machine. It, it was a bulletproof. It wasn't bulletproof, but I'm telling you, it was airworthy. Airworthy. So, Dan, what's the best advice you've ever received? Ah, take action. Uh, I had a partner. I'll, I'll mention his name, and you can even look him up. He's worth a look. His name is Ron Laker. Uh, he sold his his uh, business at TMR Metals for $700 million, former partner of mine. And uh, his advice was, this is what he would always say. He's very intelligent, very uh, very wise man. And he would say, I know, but needs to get done. (laughs) And that right there, take action, don't postpone, get it done, no excuses, figure a way to do it, get it done, is probably some of the best advice. And I learned under him. Uh, how you know to to deal with sea level types and uh, high level guys? He's on the board of directors, Tampa Bay Fortune 500 CEOs Council. He deals with you know the guys that own the Outback Steakhouse and all these other places. So really, it's the take action thing. I don't care what you got to do. No excuses. Find a way to get it done. Let me know when it's done. You know that is take action. So that's that's what I would say. What is something that's working for you right now? Well, of course, the networking. Tens of thousands of uh, contacts, and then the very minuscule 5%, top 3% of people that really are at the top of their game 
that really want to help other people get the same things and get the job done. So I'd say networking with the top three to 5% of the people at the top of their game in their fields that want to help others is working for me because they really do. They get it done. They want to help other people and they can make that happen. So it's actually getting done back to what Ron had said. I don't care. Get it done. These people get it done. So working with people who get it done is working for me now. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with you can share with our listeners? Writing is is my way of, of capturing it. I would say do that. Write. Because it cements what's in your mind. It puts it on paper. You can go back to it. You can forget it. You know, a lot of people with books, once you write a book, all that stuff that's in the back of your mind that you want to hold on to because you know one day you're going to write the book. It goes away because you can say, look, all I got to do is go back to the book and I'll remember it. So it frees your mind to go ahead and learn new stuff. So when you write something down, you can forget it because you know you can go back to it. So that's what I like about that. Now, if it's Evernote or something like that, man, that could that could disappear. That site could go away or I could lose my hard drive if I didn't back it up. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Old school. So, Dan, speaking of books, do you have one book you can recommend for our listeners? Oh, absolutely. Uh, out of out of the hundreds of books on the shelves here, one of the better ones, and there's a, there's quite a few, but one that really is really pulls it together for the entrepreneurs, Ready, Fire, Aim by Michael Masterson. And his name is actually Mark Ford. But Michael Masterson's his pen name. He's out of Delray Beach. I've met with Michael on occasion. And uh, him and Rich Sheffron and the gang down there, it's a great crew. Ready, Fire, Aim is a book you must have on your shelf. And uh, there's one more, too, by Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine. Those two books right there should really uh, give people a lot, of, a lot of insight into business and where they need to go. Because there's four levels to business. You just need the first level. Just put the first things in place from zero to a million. And then you'll you know, build up your resources after that. Because you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, they can go from zero to a million almost on their own, but then they tap themselves out and they plateau. But Masterson in Ready, Fire, Aim very expertly goes through all of this. It make, he makes it easy. It's a great book. I'd pick it up. Absolutely. Nice. Well, Fire Nation, I know you love audio. And if you haven't already, you can get the audio version of this book for free by going to eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. So, Dan, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Digital information product. You've got a laptop. <laughs> right. It's so easy. I would absolutely. Here's an example. Go to littlegiantbook.com. Download my latest book for free. Okay. That is a book that I just put out. It's got 50 experts in it talking to you about business. And they're giving you their insights about what we've been talking about. I would create a book like that and sell it for $19.95. You know, whatever it might be. $9.99 on Kindle. If there's a Kindle on this planet. It's identical to Earth, so there definitely is. Okay, well, nine ninety nine and Kindle then. So I definitely would create, you know, what I know about. There's always a market for what you know, whether you know it or not. Somebody else needs or wants to know what you so know. So true. So write what you know and go ahead, publish it digitally, and then sell it online and take payments. So I would absolutely produce an information product that fast. Love that. And Dan, I've just really enjoyed your journey. Thank you for letting me hold your feet to the fire and force you to tell real stories. And we really got a lot out of that. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, share how we can find you, and then we'll say goodbye. All right. First of all, it's not about you or me. It's about the people we help. So the person who helped me find you, John, is Tammy Levent. Yes, and Tammy. T-A-M-M-Y-L-E-V-E-N-T. 
and she's at TammyLevent.com. So give people that have gotten you to where you are the due that they are sort of due. So TammyLevent.com, I want to thank Tammy for introducing me to you and getting us on this call to help the people who are listening now on Fire Nation. So that is that is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, BusinessMentors101.com, definitely go there. 100% money back guarantee, da, da, da. You know that's going to be the case. We're there to help you. And uh, that's what I want to do. And that's where I'm at. That's all I do is focus on finding the right people to help other people get on with things and get it done. Not, you know, I just can't take this where people can't get stuff done. It just, that's something that I'm, that's my passion is finding people who get it done and then get other people. So really businessmentors101.com is where they can find me now. Love it. And Fire Nation is well aware. They can find the links to everything that we've talked about today, Dan, by going to entrepreneuronfire.com slash Dan Ayuto. And you can also just go to entrepreneuronfire.com, click on the podcast tab, and Dan will be listed right there under the podcast in our little archive tab there. So Dan, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Awesome, John. Look for you then. Fire Nation, you're not alone. When you join our mastermind community, Fire Nation Elite, you'll be joining a tribe of like-minded people who are here to help you feel confident about your business, help you find the right track, and help you grow your business, launch your new products or services, and become the entrepreneur you've always wanted to be. 100% support, 100% of the time. Visit firenationelite.com to fill out your application and schedule a one-on-one 15-minute chat with me today. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.